Ok, I've been reading comments and some of you wanted to know how I sculpt my character's clothes. This video is gonna be about how to fully model and sculpt this cyberpunk suit. Yeah, I know it's not a full size coat, but the techniques and things I'm gonna show you in this video will be useful for any type of clothing you have. Also next week we're gonna texture and render it, be sure to check that one out too. I put a bunch of time steps in the video, so you won't waste your time and only watch the parts where you want to learn about. So skip to the good parts if you're bored already with my voice. I won't be mad, I promise. We're going to start with the modeling of the coat, sculpting the wrinkles and folds. Also I'll be uploading the practice files and real time videos on Gumroad and Patreon page. Check it out if you're interested and let's go. Before you start, make up your mind about what you're gonna model. Find some good references, draw if you're good at it, just have some kind of reference beside you. And do not start empty handed. First make a plane and rotate it. Make sure it's in the center. Press tab to go to edit mode and drag it to right or left. In the modifier properties, add a mirror modifier. Enable a snap and put it on face and turn on project individual element. Now select poly build tool, hover your mouse to outside of the plane and drag it out. Simply just go around the model till you cover those areas. If you are struggling with this, watch my retopology videos, I explain it further there. It is the exact same method. I use this free add-on that shows the mesh better by coloring it. If you want yours to look the same, I put the link in the description, you can download the add-on for free. The shoulder part is a bit tricky, so maybe do what I did here. And if you need more faces to bridge together, Together, just hover your mouse on that specific face and press Ctrl R. This will be our base mesh to start sculpting on. Foundation is important, so take your time. If your clothing have color, in the edge select mode, select the edges around the neck and extrude it by pressing E. I added solidify modifier to give it a bit of thickness. Then added multi-res modifier to start sculpting on it. Before that, I applied the mirror modifier so the both sides connect to each other. You see it's flat AF with no detail whatsoever. So I pick up the clay strip brush and start sculpting copying the biggest folds on the coat, which is around these parts. I also have the symmetry option on, so I scop on the both sides at the same time. I have this reference by my side, I'm looking at it constantly, searching for all the folds and wrinkles, and trying to get the similar results over here. Just put in some clay and smoothen it by holding shift, nothing complicated for now. I'm just gonna keep it at this speed, so you can see what I'm doing, while listening to some random ass royalty free music. Once you're happy with the big details, just subdivide every now and then and get to the lower details. But definitely don't go too high at first, cause we gotta work on the foundation in the lower poly count. Now press shift C to select crease brush. This brush is pretty good for seam part of the clothes like the ones on the shoulder where fabric is stitched together. For better control, press N to bring up the right menu in the stroke section, turn on a stabilized stroke and increase radius and factor. What it does is, it gives the brush a bit of delay to prevent the brush from getting the shake of the hand when you move the pen or mouse on the screen so it's basically easier to control and the result is obviously better but much less room for error larger the number of the radius meaning larger distance between the pen and the line following it so keep it at a reasonable distance just enough that you're comfortable with not more by holding control the brush direction gets reversed pushes out the mesh you can change it on the top corner of the screen plus means it pushes out minus means it subtract the mesh this one is good for when you want to add just a bit of bulkiness between two stitches. You can also smooth out any sharp edges you see by holding shift. In this part, I make a line using crease brush and holding control, I bring up the edges just a bit so the stitches get more visible. You can always correct some of the issues by using move brush. Maybe change the direction of the creases if you think it's not at the right spot. And do the same thing again for the zip part. We're gonna make the zipper later in the video and place it right here. So it should have place to sit on.
For the back part, I select the mask brush and select the parts I want to push out. Then by pressing Ctrl I, you can invert the selection and now sculpt or move only the parts that we painted on. In a higher subdivide level, I pronounce the line even more using crease brush. I realized I needed a lot more folds because it still feels really flat. Decrease the subdivide one time and using inflate and clay strip brush, I started creating some folds based on the reference I got. Just putting clay on the fold parts and by holding Ctrl, subtract around the fold to get the fold pop out a bit more. Then I smooth it out by holding Shift until we got a decent looking fold. Inflate brush adds very smooth volume to the mesh. You can use this brush for adding smaller, more round folds on the cloth. Also, it can be useful for inflate inflating the folds that you already sculpted to a bigger size. Usually the parts close to the stitches have more folds but they're smaller because they're stretched tighter by different stitches. But this can be completely different based on the type of clothing you're sculpting. Obviously leather won't fold the same as cotton. You just need to look at a lot of different reference photos to get the results that you're looking for. Unless you're a pro with years of experience that you can sculpt all of that details from imagination. Which I know I'm not so I use references and you should too. You can also use crease brush in higher brush size for pronouncing the lines between the folds and then smooth it out. I realized I needed one more seam here on the shoulder, so I added one using crease brush while the stabilized stroke is enabled. If you look at some clothes, you see we usually have some small folds between the seams based on the type of fabric. To achieve that, zoom in, pick up clay strip brush, lower the size of the brush, add some folds, subtract the middle, add some more folds, subtract again, do that constantly until you fulfill the middle of the seam with folds. It really affects the realism, so be aware of these small details. Although I have to mention again, it's not gonna be on every type of clothing, so check out your reference. Now, I'm gonna model that cyberpunk thing they got over their necks, starting with a cube. In edit mode, I drag it to the right, scale it down, rotate it, and start extruding the back face. Rotate, extrude again, do that over and over, until I get to the back of the head. Added mirror modifier, deleted the face at the end, turned on clipping, cause they're gonna bridge together, that's why the cap should be open. Pressing Ctrl R, and mouse wheel up, I added few loop cuts. Gotta have enough poly counts, cause we're gonna start scoping on it. Thank you. 
Apply the mirror modifier, then add multi res modifier and subdivide few times. Now using inflate brush, I made some folds all over the thing. The outside made out of leather, so there shouldn't be any intense folds cause leather don't bend that much. Just adding and subtracting the surface until we get the whole mesh, just like the reference. After we're done with the folds, it's time for the seams again. Using crease brush, while the stabilizer stroke is on, I start adding seams on each corner to get that stitch look. If you're not happy with the crease, on the right menu, you can change the pinch number. It changes the way crease brush subtract the mesh. By changing the number, you can make the crease sharper or duller. Now for the thing they got on their shoulders, make a cylinder, in edit mode, scale down the top, move it to the right, inset the face by pressing I, or if it doesn't look right, press E to extrude, S to scale it down, push it forward, extrude again, scale it down, and push it down this time, extrude and scale down again, add a subdivision modifier, Ctrl R to add a loop cut at the end, I change the shape a bit by adding few more edges, we don't need no details for this one, since we gotta take care of it in texturing section, scale the whole thing down, added mirror modifier, we want the same thing on the other side. Place it on the right side. In edit mode, press shift D to duplicate it and place it beside the other one. We're placing these down while their bottom is inside the jacket. Cause we're gonna go back to the jacket and fold the parts where these guys are located. Back to the jacket, pick up the inflate brush. Holding control, push down around the circle and make some folds outside of the circle to create the look that the circles are pushing the jacket inside. Do that for all of them. In the edit mode, I select the faces around the mesh. Shift D to duplicate and press P and selection to separate it. Delete the multi res because we don't want all that crazy bumps and folds on this one. I added a solidify modifier to give it a bit of thickness. Then a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. I lowered the height, then duplicated it two times. And just like the code, I went back to the base mesh and added some folds so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. Using the exact same method that we used in the beginning of the video, I'm creating these lines on the coat. Make sure you have the mirror modifier enabled cause we got these lines on the other side too. Then in edit mode, select all and duplicate it two times. Added a bit of thickness, selecting the coat, using crease brush again, I'm sculpting these lines outside of it. Just going around it till we got some nice lines. Make sure the stabilized stroke is on. I realized the front part of it comes down and I didn't do that in the beginning. So I gone back to the edit mode, select a few edges in the bottom and extrude them down. Now it gets weird in the sculpt mode. We just need to smooth out the weird parts and sculpt the remaining details to match up with the rest. 
for the light around the neck again using the same method as before I select these faces shift D to duplicate and separate them by pressing P add solidify modifier then shape them just like the shape I put up on the screen we have the mirror modifier enabled from the previous mesh so we just need to select half of the mesh the other half is just reverse pressing ctrl R I added loop cuts close to the corners so the corners get sharper then do that for the remaining strips since it's basic modeling and I've shown the method before I skip it now for the zipper make it plain in edit mode scale it down ctrl R to add a loop cut add another one to the left face scale it down one more loop cut scale it up this time and scale down the end select the faces around the plane and extrude it by pressing E selecting the up and down edges and bridge them so the mesh gets closed select the whole faces around the mesh and pressing ctrl B to bevel then scroll up to add few more edges add an array modifier in relative offset I put 0 and factor X and instead increase the Y to 1 now it should be vertical back in the edit mode I made the front a bit smaller increase the count number shift A and add path curve select the zip right click and snap selection to cursor add a curve modifier select the curve as the curve object and deform axis on Z minus in my case if it's not working properly switch between other deform axis now select the curve in edit mode select the points and drag them to the zip area you can twirl the zip by pressing ctrl T if the zip is still large select the zip and scale it down then just increase the array count to fill out the rest of the curve for the other side select the curve shift D to duplicate it right click to place it back go to object mirror and select X to mirror it to the other side now select the zip itself shift D to duplicate and in the modifier section change the curve object to the second curve that we duplicated now it should be on the other side if you're having trouble controlling it select two of the points right click and subdivide to add a new point now you get more points to control select the zip press G move it till the left zip position fixed at the right one and they locked up with each other now for the zip itself add a plane rotate it in the edit mode ctrl R and add two loop cuts I scale down the third and fourth edges add another loop cut on the top then I scale down the top as well maybe another loop cut here shape it based on your zipper select the edges around it press E to extrude it to the back in the back select the left and right edges right click and bridge edge loops select the edges around the mesh and just like the previous one press ctrl B and scroll up to add more edges to the bevel select the second face shift D to duplicate right click to place it back and P to separate in the edit mode scale it down extrude it rotate extrude again rotate and extrude again bevel the edges and move it up a bit for the hanger it's really optional but I do a simple futuristic shape like this you can hang whatever you want to it now select all of the three meshes and place them on the zipper we are done with the modeling make sure you check out the next week's video i'm gonna show you how to texture and render it it's going to be awesome if you find this video helpful you know what to do see you on the next episode peace